Hi guys, I just wanted to put a little thing on uh, YouTube showing up my um, showing my FT8 setup on the computer. I um, mean, like you know, I'm using WSJTX there, like you know, pretty reliable program. But this is the one that really is so cool. At the top, I've got the waterfall for WSJTX and then to the bottom left I've got a ham radio logbook which I'll uh, just bring to the front there see like that um, just now the other bit above it and to the right this is grid tracker and it is an absolutely brilliant program I used to use J JT alert to link my logbook to WSJTX but um, I never used any of the functions of JT Alert apart from that. Grid Tracker, on the other hand, is something else. I mean, it can do all kinds. I mean, you can you know you can zoom out to your world map. You can see the PSK spots, uh, PSK reporter spots, showing you all over the world where the spots are. Zoom in, like so. This little, hang on, just let me get a bit closer so you can see this gizmo here is the call roster now that's showing you um, who's calling CQ on the band at the time <laughs> now here's one here in America so if I click on him away he goes hang on I'll just go turn the noise down on this thing right so now all I did was click on grid, grid tracker and it automatically told WSJTX to transmit to this guy and see if we can get him I don't know it's Puerto Rico I might get him I'm on the 30 meter band here and it's not too good but there are some interesting stations coming back no he didn't get me but like anyway but look on here and the yellow dotted line is showing you the path of my transmission yeah if I take off the spots like if we just click here and get rid of the PSK spots there we go so you can have a look over here and it will give you paths of anybody else. At the moment there isn't anybody to worry about. But as soon as I transmit again, it will give me my transmission path. Now somebody else has jumped in there. As you can see, somebody else has grabbed him. So I can go split and then try and keep his attention, which I shall do. Why is it not doing that? Mmm. Oh, there we go. Right. So I'm going to split my TX frequency up a bit, like so. Where is it? There. You see, I'm moving it up off of his receiver frequency, so it won't interfere with his QSO down here. But I can still call him, <laughs> and hopefully, when he's done with this um, Ukrainian station, then he'll grab me. Hopefully. I've just had um, one American station. Just came out of nowhere. Um, there one, that one there, Mark. And he is in Jupiter, Wisconsin, I think. Yeah, I think that's WC anyway. Got to really start getting those Western states I'm glad that the conditions are getting a lot better now because like I'm uh, I'm sort of lacking a lot of stations on the uh, the west coast like any at all <laughs> but there you go there's the path as it's transmitting for this guy but unfortunately it doesn't look like he's hearing me now do I put the power up a bit and upset the FT8 police who reckon that you can work the world with five watts or less yeah, you work the world with whatever you need to use. That's my opinion. Please feel free to comment down below if you disagree. But, um, there you go. Sometimes I can do it with 20 watts. Sometimes I do it with 100 watts. Depends what I'm after and what the conditions are like. But anyway, this I just wanted to put this on here. Grid Tracker is probably 
the best companion program for WSJTX. I believe it works with uh, JTDX as well. And it links Ham Radio Deluxe software, like the logbook software, with um, the transmission software. And it's got so many things. But this call roster thing is great because all the stations calling CQ come up on that list there. And all you've got to do is click their name. And then it does it all for you. It's, a, it, it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, alarm panel of GMDSS. Like, I think I'm taking too much of my work home with me. <laughs> but like, I think I'll give up on this chat because it doesn't seem to uh, doesn't seem to be hearing me. So I'll stop that transmission there, and we'll switch over to 40 meters. Uh, yeah, 40 meters. Oh, and there's plenty on there. So let's just uh, clear the screens. Clear that. Oh, lots coming up on there. We've got Croatia. Croatia. Poland. Bosnia. Oman. Poland. Venezuela. Oh, there's lots, lots, and lots, and lots. Let's have a look and see what we got. Venezuela then, shall we? Let's better make sure I'm all tuned in. Hang on. SWR is good. Okay, so we'll click on the Venezuela station wherever he's gone and he's vanished. He ain't on the list anymore. He must be on the other uh, rotation. So let's just wait for him to flash up again. And is he there? No. Somebody grabbed him. Not surprising. That's an unusual call sign for a Polish station. Three Zulu. Was it? Or was he gone? Oh, let's go for a crow. No. But you see, like they're all flashing up. Every station on here that's calling CQ flashes up on this list. It saves you mucking around with this as they go up, and you always end up clicking on the one that you don't want, or you might do. Whereas up here, if you just literally wait for them to flash up, click on the one you want, and away it goes. So, what have we got? Let's go for European Russia then. So, we just click on this call sign. Oh no, alright, I was a bit slow there. <laughs> it's one of my rambling videos, but I just want to show you how cool this function is. So, let's go for European Russia. So, now, look, see. That one there, ready to TX, just wait for it to go. Can't see any reason why I wouldn't get it. 40 meters is not the best um, band for this. Uh, my antenna is a Hustler with lots of um, random length radials and 50, 50 square meters of chicken wire under the ground, as, uh, well, sorry, lying on, on top of the ground under the decking. Not the most efficient because none of, it, uh, none of the um, radials are resonant lengths or anything. I think one of them might be. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I can do astonishing things with 40 meters. But there you go, I got him straight away. So, just, you know, send him back his signal. And there it is, giving me the path. He lights up red there because he's in communication, you see, with me. Finish this QSO and that will finish the video. So, comes back with an RR73, comes up with my auto logging window. So, I'll just log that. Doink! He comes up in there, and then I just. It's a bit difficult to see with the camera in the way. I open up that window, look him up. And I'm not getting any information on him, so he might be, I, I use QRZ for lookup, but he might be um, with QRZCQ, so all I do is, I just highlight, copy, then we go into 
Googly googly. Hang on. What's going on here? So he came back uh, 73, no problem there. Um, so if you can't find them um, with the automatic lookup, then what I do is I go to this other site here. Pop his call sign in and see if he shows up here. And it's Victor in Russia. Now that's all the information. Whoops, that's all the information I've got of him. So I'll just take that. There he is, Victor. Sorry, camera in the wrong place. Copy that. Close that down. Pop his, pop his old handle in there. Think, unfortunately, no other information available. And add that. What I don't ever, ever do is spot FD8. FT8, um, so he's coming up green now because I've spoken to him. I never spot FT8. DX cluster spots. I see it's totally pointless because everybody knows where to find them anyway. They know the frequency, but um, I've had a bit of a conversation, shall we say, about that in groups about FT8 spots. More unusual data modes, yeah, fine. Or SSB. That's the whole point because you don't say if you're running up and about in the bands looking for things like and like. Especially if you're looking for unusual DX or IOTA or something like that or SOTA. But something where you know exactly where it's going to be. Hmm. I don't know. I've filtered out all the spots on DX cluster anyway, so I don't see FT8 in the cluster. But it's a uh, great setup, this is.